Hey everybody, welcome. So I'm using Blender 4.1 and if you guys are following the Blender Today Lives, you will know and you're about to know that Bloom is gone from EV Next. In the future, Blender is going to put something in there as a preset, but for now, I have added that in so that you can use Bloom with EV Next in Blender 4.1 and you can do this as a Bloom feature in 3.6 as well. And so I'm just gonna jump right in here. This is 4.1 alpha that I'm using. I am continuously trying to download 4.0 beta again, and every time it gets stuck at like 270 something megabytes. So we'll see about that. So here's the LM Studio, and I've done a ton of updates to this recently. It's got a lot of really good features built in. Just going to delete everything and I'm going to put in my own scene, which you can use if you have this. It'll come with the Umbrella Studio just built in. And so here's the Umbrella Studio. I'm going to jump over into Cycles. It lets me. And we're going to go into EV Next. And everything in the EV Next engine looks really good so far. And just for now, don't forget to go to the viewport shading and go to the compositor and click always. I don't have a button for that just yet, but I will get one. So I've got the EV Next Bloom operator set up. Um, all we have to do is click compositor. All right, so I had an error there, which is really obvious, but I just didn't get it. Um, Justice can't really see me. And so the error was obviously when you split screens in Blender, it's pulling the mouse position to set the split. So I had to like rework the code a little bit. So it does it now um, by a preset position of the center of the screen. So now if you click compositor, it's just going to split the screen for you. And then the nodes which are gonna be here. I kinda of already generated them, so I saved this file because I've got to set up a, uh, excuse me, a 4.1 uh, blend file here just for kind of prototyping this out. So you click set up nodes and voila, you've got that. If you switch over to rendered, uh, make sure, like I said, you're on always, scene light, scene world's on, you know this. I'm set to EV next. Turn the samples up just a touch and these are tied to the node, but since I saved it, they are not quite updated. So I'm just going to put like two in there or whatever, and it will update on the compositor. It just makes it a little bit easier to have it right here. Really seems to like zoom in. And so now you've got Bloom set up in EV Next where you don't have that. You don't have Bloom. Uh, so if you look down here, you've got ray tracing, which is great. It's actually pretty amazing. Depth of field, performance, volumes, blah, blah, blah. You got all that good stuff. Um, so don't, don't forget, though, to turn your samples up so things look good. And so you have got the posturize here. You can kind of play around with these values. The mix factor really isn't going to uh, give you too much, but you can bring it up or down. I just leave it at one. doesn't really matter where you leave that one. Uh, but the blur, like just select down and hold the mouse, and then you can increase this so that you have your EV bloom, if you will. I'm pretty sure that this, let me do a, another. And so hopefully that will give you a really good option for now until Blender decides to put something static in there. And then I'll have some kind of solution for that as well. If it's like a, some type of property or some kind of buried thing, but uh, they were talking about putting a preset right here inside the compositor. I could very well do that with the add-on myself, but uh, I will just wait for them to do something. And until then, on the LM Studio, I will have that so you can do your bloom. And I'll make like a little sub-node add-on for that too. That'll be separate if you wanted to pick that up. I'll put that on the Gumroad, and you can support the channel with that if you like. And what we'll do is just kind of overview this a little bit. So the lights or meshes option here, you can kind of switch between what type of objects you have in the scene and you can just kind of cycle through and grab them. 
like top, bottom, panels, all these different things. You can grab all of that, and then you can switch back to the lights. And I won't go over all that. I've covered quite a bit of it. Um, the camera manager static from LM5 and the LM6 tools will be the gobos. So anytime you want, you can add a gobo shader light and use the fun option of Alt X to pull up the light intensity. And from that, with that light selected, all you have to do is click Reload Gobos. And you can pull up anything from uh, multiple categories. Right now I've got Windows, Abstract, Trees, and Branches. I'm always crazy about that, but I like the Abstract folder. So if you reload that and put something in here, then you'll see it. And the only crux to this at the moment is that it's only going to work in Cycles. So you have to go back over into Cycles if you want to see that. But the cool thing is that because that is a compositor setup, and I switched over to the shader editor just to look at that. Because that is a composite, and this the real-time compositor uh, built in, you will actually be able to change these features, and they will still 100% work inside of Cycles, which is really cool. So you've got like a bloom in Cycles as well. And I am on CPU, and I need to be on GPU. That's annoying. There we go. I was wondering why I was lagging out. It's like my computer's not perfect, but it's not that slow. There we go. And so you also have the fog add here. So I can add a little fog. And all that is, just switch back over to the shader editor. If I click add fog. It's just going to add a principal volume to a volume on a material output of a cube. That's all that is, very simple. And then you can change the fog color so you can get some pretty spectacular results. And you can mix that with the compositor and you've got a pretty good setup. So the add-on is pretty good. I've actually got the add-on on sale right now. If you wanna pick that up on Blender Market, it really supports the channel and I really appreciate it if you guys go pick it up. And if you like it, nobody's going to know if you don't leave a review. So leave a review and on to the next panel. Let's just be more of a brief because I know I'm, I'm killing everybody with my updates, but I keep finding new ways to make this add-on better. So, you know, shoot me over it, I guess. Uh, the exposure can be changed. And I want to grab that light. See which light is it? This one. And see, we can just bring up the intensity of that light. And you can change the background to that as well. Maybe to slightly match the color. And let's do something cool. I'm going to drop out LM6 tools. And for the light, I want to actually match it to the fog. And so if I just click here, it's going to make the fog look like it's projecting that light in essence. And then the black body intensity can always be changed and increase the, or should I say, make it more accurate to real world lighting temperatures or black body intensities. And don't forget you have the fog density factor here. And that's why it's good. You don't have to switch between the compositor, the shader editor, all these different places, properties panel, it's just not fun. And then you've got to go through the properties panel and switch lights, objects, scene, everything else, materials, it's just no fun. So that's why it's good to have the add-on so you can do whatever you want. And so if I change the fog density, that would definitely uh, kind of change the look of the entire scene, maybe in a good way. And that looks pretty cool. You could actually render that out and give it a look. And actually, let's see if we can just do this. Let me hide that bad boy for now. Let's bring the camera in. And don't forget, if you've got an active camera uh, or cameras, there's a camera manager in here. All you got to do is select the camera right here, Alt C, and you can kind of change the 
focal length, turn on thirds, you can use depth of field, or you can just click focus camera, and focus camera is a little script that is built to grab the first object, or rather the closest object to the camera. And so it's actually grabbing the plane, but you can change that object to the man or whatever thing you want to focus on. And then you can render that out. And I am in cycles. So you could just render this for the fun of it. And there you go. You can render out the fog. You can render out the gobos. You can render out the illumination coming off of. And I went ahead and did a little split screen here. And so this is fun because now you'll see how the add-on can work after you've rendered something. And I can't help you there. You'll actually have to render something. Um, I can change the bloom, if you will, and give it a second update. Let's just bring it down to something where you wouldn't see it. There we go. You can see the bloom will actually update from the add-on here because it is controlling that node. And so you conceptually don't even need that area open unless you want to add more nodes and compositing so your post processing is going to be a little bit simpler and i plan on making this a whole lot more advanced but this is just a fix for blender 4.1 and so you'll be able to change these factors and kind of mess around with the bloom any way you want And then if you want to bring that compositor set up back, um, all you got to do is click the compositor button and you're done. So nice and easy, very quick setup. And I do love in 4.1 how you can actually see a little icon above the um, render layers. That's really cool. And I think all of them will have it, but that's a different tutorial to go in. I think they should all have it, but whatever. And I don't do a lot of tutorials specifically with EV next but I will be picking up pace here as I get into the LM Studio add-on including all the EV features for Blender 4.1. That's it. Subscribe, like, and I will see you guys in the next one.